Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of my journey on owning a Polestar 2. I thought this week I'd get out uh, from behind my desk and actually record uh, some of this video from inside the car. So here I am, welcome to Roxy. This week I'm just going to expand on some of the numbers that we uh, had a look at last week and uh, break it down a bit further into more detail. Firstly, here's just the list of my current issues. As stated previously, I've listed everything here that I currently have a problem with. Missing items, as most people have had. Uh, Wi-Fi not connecting to anything. 4G very unreliable. And then uh, the same issues that I've made other videos about. So due to the UK lockdown, I haven't taken the car out in seven days. So it was just sitting in the drive. I charged it for three days and then left it at 90%. And it's just been sitting in the drive, not uh, not going anywhere. I just checked on the charge every now and then. Uh, and then on uh, Friday, I thought, let me go and see if there's any updates for the car. And to my surprise, after, what, since the middle of November, when the Wi-Fi has not worked once, suddenly on Friday it worked. And as you can see from the slide here, it was connected to my home and my uh mobile phone hotspot was also shown there and on the right hand side you can see on friday i downloaded 1.3 gigabytes of data which was mainly maps uh, the offline maps and um, youtube songs and it uploaded 17 megabytes but obviously none of that was to polestar or related to any kind of over there updates so I was quite happy, Wi-Fi is suddenly working again, nothing's changed. What could have caused it to all of a sudden work? And how long would it carry on working? Well, the sad news is that by Saturday the Wi-Fi was broken again. I hadn't changed anything, I hadn't changed any settings, I hadn't done anything. But when I came on Saturday, I couldn't get 4G or Wi-Fi. So Saturday was... A dead day for any data in the car. Now the 4G issues are uh, coming up a lot and it looks like um, Polestar have acknowledged this 4G issue is related to um, basically the capacity that's available at their suppliers. But anyway you can see here that they've identified the problem and they're working to fix it and some uh, people have mentioned on the forums that by Monday these uh, capacity issues should be resolved. So let's wait and see. Now I don't think the 4G and the Wi-Fi issues are connected, but who knows? I really can't work it out. I've read a lot of forums. I've um, tried a lot of settings on uh, on my car, but uh, I really couldn't work out what was going on. Uh, the next slide just is a reminder of what we're waiting for. So basically the Polestar app uh, is uh, scheduled. I presume it's scheduled for spring because the first one says ability to use mobile phone as a key for Polestar 2. Now without the app, you can't use your phone as a key. So I'm presuming that the key, this will be available in spring now. Whether that is spring March, April, May, June or July. I don't know. I don't know why they can't just release a basic app that does one or two things. It allows them to get familiar with it, make sure it connects to the car correctly, does all the right stuff. And then they can add to it step by step. As the weeks go by, add one new feature per week. That would be the best way to do it. But we've been waiting a long time for this app and looks like we're going to wait even longer. So those of you that saw my video last week, uh, we reviewed the de December efficiency numbers in, uh, in my car. So for those who are not aware, every time I do a journey, I record the details and log it in the database so that we can analyze the numbers at the end of each month and then compare month to month and compare based to uh, various different metrics. So if you have a look at this week, I've, um, I've broken down all the numbers I've had since I received the car. So that's from 
the end of September. And you'll see on the screen three different areas that I record and um, then for each journey and then we can analyze them based on that. So in the top left you see a table which shows you the temperature. So every time I go for a drive I record the temperature at the end of that journey. Now it's not, there's nothing scientific about this. I don't record the temperature at the start and the temperature at the end. I just record the temperature at the end and I do it the same way for every journey. So it can give us some way of comparing numbers. So the top left table you'll see the the, um, the miles and the range in uh, kilowatt hours per 100 miles or kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers based on the average temperature. So you'll see there the lowest temperature I've driven in so far is 3 degrees and the highest is 16 degrees and as you can see if you go through the table you'll see a relatively constant curve from high consumption at low temperatures to lesser consumption at higher temperatures. If you look in the top right hand uh, box here you can see I record the conditions, the driving conditions. So I've made up some the scale of 1 to 5 where 1 is totally dry and 5 is totally wet and each journey gets a number between 1 and 5. So out of the journeys I've recorded so far, uh, the dry ones are showing a consumption of 32.1 while I've, I've not yet recorded a very wet uh, drive but uh, 4 out of 5 is uh, it came in at 36. Now you can't tell exactly from this number because it doesn't take into account any of the the temperature. So as I showed you in last week, the curve of the temperature correlates almost exactly to the consumption of the car. Because I haven't integrated the temperature in this graph, it's very, it's not a very um, good comparison, but it's just something to give you an idea of how we break it down. And then the bottom right hand corner is whether I preheated the car before I went on the drive or not. And again, we can't read too much into this because in September and October when I got the car and it was above 12 degrees, I would never have preheated the car anyway. I wouldn't read too much into it, but I'll look for a way between these three metrics, temperature, conditions, and preheating, I'll look for a way of how I can combine those into something that's meaningful. But anyway, I hope that's uh, useful for you. Uh, let's, uh, I'll carry on recording my, uh, my journeys. Obviously January is going to be a pretty low number because of the lockdown and we're not, just not going anywhere at the moment. But over the year, we'll be able to see how consumption goes up and down based on temperature, based on speed based on all sorts of different metrics that I record. If there's another metric that you think might be useful, put it in the comments below and let's, uh, let's take a look if we can record any details that would help us come up with a number for that metric. I'm interested to get your thoughts on the new format of this video. Does it work for you? Or do you have any suggestions? Leave them in the comments box below. Or do you want me to go back to just being the voice on the video? I look forward to your comments. Anyway, thanks very much for joining me today. Please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you're advised of new videos in the future. And thanks for watching.